Welcome back. Today we are going to take a look at the craziness that is the Armstrid CPC, a machine, or Schneider CPC in my case, which is the German version, a machine that most have never seen in their life. And I have quite a few thingies here that all belong to that machine, and I actually have two, which are stacked on top of each other. And a green monitor, and I have more of these, and a color monitor, but we're not going to take a look at the color monitor. I also have software back there, there, there. And yeah, we will take a look at this, and I will talk a little about these machines and how they shaped my retro computer life, or my life back then when it wasn't actually retro. Yeah, let's dust this off because it's really dusty. And let's give it a go and see if it actually still works. I have not used this in quite a while. So, fire. Okay, so I did dust off the monitor. Looks much better already. The joystick there. And this is the actual machine that I had well, not this exact machine, but the type of machine I had as a kid. Um, and a kid being, I don't quite recall how old I was. It was my second machine after the C64. And I bought this because it had two things going for it. The first one being Batman. I saw this isometric game in one of the video game magazines and I just wanted to play it. And it wasn't available for the C64. so. Yeah, that, hmm. I actually then bought it, the bigger box version of this. This is a budget version from the Hit Squad. Uh, I bought it and I played it about 10 minutes and I decided it's not my kind of game. So yeah, that fell through a little. But this thing had something called Locomotive Basic and this basic had graphics commands and on the C64 you the basic lacked graphics commands completely. So if you wanted to do graphics you had to peek and poke your way around, which I had no idea of, or you had to do assembly, which I also had no idea of. So yeah, this was much easier and I started immediately doing my own character sets and programming games and stuff like that. And that was that was good time. So um yeah, as you can see, and if you have seen a CPC before, you might be wondering, hasn't the CPC colored keys? Yeah, kind of, but we are in Germany and because we are Germans, we are a bit more plain. And because of that, we have the non-colored keys. And I was pretty astounded when I opened my box of CPC 464, which is, by the way, let me show you, in its own, not the greatest of all boxes. It's just a plain cardboard box. It looks like that. But for the 464, this is the one for the 6128, which we will get to in a minute. I opened the, this up and it had these grayish keys and I wanted these colorful keys. However, the machine itself was great because you had this massive thing, which is if you put a C64 for size comparison, it's about this, and you don't have the cassette deck on the side. Um, this was the all-in-one solution. It was the idea of, of Amstrad. This, by the way, rocks a Z80 processor and 64K of RAM. And um, the designation is CPC 464, the 4 standing for the cassette deck, and the 64 for the memory. Um, yeah, and you had everything you needed in this and this, and you needed the monitor because the monitor was also the power supply. So we have to connect, Let me show you. You have two cables coming from the monitor. This one right here is the power cable, which goes here. This is the RGB or video cable, which goes here. And yeah, off you go. And if you switch on the monitor, you have also a switch on the machine to switch the machine on which doesn't make too much sense, but well, it is what it is. I had the GT64 and monitor, which this is a 65, which has a se separate input here. Let me show you. 
So this has another 12 volt out. And this 12 volt out is needed for the 6128's disk drive. So we had the 6128, which is below here, which had its own cable, which then plugged into the monitor. So you had three cables. Um, yeah, and I, I had this for, I think, at least a year or two before I bought my Amiga 500. And I really liked this machine. It had a nice keyboard, um, had great basic. You could program away immediately. It had a great, had a great uh, manual. Let me show you the manuals. So this is my, not my, but A464 manual. And it's uh, this thick. And it had all the basic programming. Oh, I even have the machine passport. No idea where it was bought. And just like in the C64 manual, it had very good basic, um, a very good basic manual, and it told you all the things you had to know to actually use this machine. Yeah, I had many games on cassette tapes because that was the medium of choice here. But later I also got the so-called DDI-1, which is the three inch disk drive with a strange format disks. The 6128, which you can see here, and I will show in a minute, had the disk drive on the side. It didn't have a cassette uh, deck. So my DDA-1 would then look like this right here. So this is the DDI-1 disk drive. And this unit cost about the same as the whole machine back in the day because you couldn't just buy the drive, you couldn't connect it. You also had to buy the interface, which is this one right here. And this plugs in the back of the CBC 464. And this here can connect up to, up to two drives and plugs in the back of the disk drive. And if you have a 6128, you already have this adapter so you didn't need that and you just needed a ribbon cable to connect to the back of the computer so my setup in the end was the 464 with a cassette deck and the disk drive and these disk drives are blazingly fast compared to the c64 ones i had a 1541 before and this is just no comparison yeah, so these were mostly um, made for the British market, but they were very, very popular in Spain. They were relatively, yeah, relatively popular is a bit much. They were actually sold in Germany and I think in other countries too, but I think Spain and uh, Great Britain were the countries where these took off the most. And uh, the Amstrad was initially made as a competitor to the very cheaply produced Spectrum and Sir Alan Sugar, the guy who uh, founded Amstrad, by the way, Amstrad standing for Alan M. Sugar Trading Amstrad something, had the idea of just producing a nicer machine which, which has all the, inter the parts integrated and he came from the hi-fi sector, so he made uh, stereos. Just like Schneider in Germany. Schneider in Germany also produced a lot of hi-fi stuff and most kids had these compact hi-fi systems, uh, just one plastic cube with all the stuff like a record player and a tape deck and stuff like that in it. And so Schneider seemed to be the obvious choice to go to the German market. With a sacrifice of the color keys, which is unfortunate. And there are different models of this 464. Uh, Key-wise, the earlier models had higher keys, which were less uh, clicky. And um, yeah, this is a later model. And it actually works. So I will show you in a minute. We will plug it into a, in, the, in the capture and you can see the screen. The green screen, on the other hand, is a real yeah, pain. At least mine is now. Let me plug it in. I can just give you a quick glimpse. So this is the flickering is not the screen's fault. As you can see it's not the greatest experience to have all your 
stuff in green you feel like in the matrix as i said this had about the price of the of a c64 but included the monitor the computer and the tape deck and that is all you need to actually go about this here and disk drive as i said about the same as the machine and you could get a color monitor but that was out of my financial reach i guess it was 150 deutsch marks or 200 deutsch marks more and i just didn't have the money because i had to sell my c64 for that to get this one right here so that is the cassette version of this 64k as i said and your experience is if you don't have a disk drive you, you just load tapes and there are many different games on tape i have batman here hacker Rexion fractalus tempest trailblazer some five game collection view to a kill every once a wally codename matu sorcery was one of the of the big hitters on the on the amstrad spellbound by mastertronic we have they sold a million kung fu ghostbusters daily thompson's super test and fighter pilot then we have a german game which is werner werner was a very or is a very pop popular cartoon or comic character made by a guy, guy named brüssel um, and he's a very chaotic motorbike racing plumber type guy and i loved werner because there are movies and he's very funny and finally i have the epics action collection 4x4 off-road off -road racing street sports basketball mission impossible no impossible mission to mission to california games and the games winter edition and this is actually a disc based game and i can show you what the discs look like and they look like this so these are three inch discs and you can actually open these there's a little thing on the side and if you push this to the side you can see that this thing opens and there's a disc inside and these are double sided so you can actually turn them around and use the other side and it says a and b and they have your right protection here these are actually pretty good discs they are made very very nicely and reliably and you can just uh, flick a switch here and you have right protection unlike the c64 stuff where you have to put a sticker on but they were expensive so this is an investment in itself and i also found that i have actually a hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy infocom adventure version for the amstrad cpc and the pcw and uh, it also comes on disc and we will try to get this to run and i have a whole box of discs right here let's maybe go and check out batman as the only one so let's load this uh, and i show you this and then we go and check out the 6128 and that is a totally different experience from this tape loading machine here which takes 15 20 minutes to load a game and you will see what i mean in a minute let me switch the monitor to the side and uh, hook up the capture card and then i'll be back okay, i hooked up the capture let's see if this actually works power cable is a bit flaky because i extended this up here with this cable so i think i have to actually hook up the the green screen again which means you won't see my face so monitor's back let's try this again run play and there's actually a volume wheel on the side here and you can also hear the cassette sounds if there are any ah. yeah i found batman crazy yeah this takes a while i will be back when uh, this has actually loaded Here we are. 
you can use a joystick by the way this only has one joystick port so the Armstrong had a speciality which made it impossible to use standard joysticks which is that you can actually plug a second joystick into the first one so all the Armstrong joysticks or some of them had this extra port on the side and uh, the pinout is a bit different than on standard joysticks I think this joystick actually does not work properly because well it's a shitty joystick to begin with it looks a little, little bit like the Atari joystick just with a different grip this rubber stuff here and the form factor so I think we are not so far away from that yeah, it looks like it's just going crazy the myth and you just steer him here not sure how to jump and as you can see this is pretty colorful because the Amstrad other than the C64 which had pretty muted colors had very vibrant colors and I think there's no key to actually jump by the way loading took about five minutes which is less than I expected. Yeah, this is a classic puzzle game. You can theoretically jump. It's just that I'm too stupid to do it. Do, 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 do. Yeah, and we have to to get these I these items like boots and a backpack and stuff like that. The belt. Yeah, that is Batman and I played it for a while and then I decided nope, not my type of game. Because I was bad at it, let's let's put it that way. Okay, so um, let's take a quick look around the machine on the back side and the side just to show you which ports are here and then we go and put in the 6128. On the side we have a single joystick port and the audio out. And on the back we have a printer interface, 5 volts in, monitor out, um, floppy disk connector and that is it on this side. And we have a power switch here and the volume wheel here. Nice machine, bulky, it's like just a slab of wood. And you needed a lot of space on the table but it does what it should and it actually works and I think it's a nice machine. And the basic is very good, as I said. Let's take a look at the 6128, which is a very, very different machine. So it might look pretty much the same. It does have a different keyboard, of course. Let me put these two side by side here for a minute. And you can see that the 464 uh, is actually wider than this machine and Quite a bit higher. If you put them like this, you can see this. This is a much slimmer machine, much better to work on. So, this is a budget version and the one which came out first, and then later they brought out this machine with a disk drive inside. So, let's take a look around. So, this is the more professional looking machine with a pro keyboard. Let's call it that. It feels pretty much the same like the other, but well, mine was broken here in the case and you can still see it here. And I got this and the 464 and uh, many games and discs and stuff for 350 euros in a, in a haul. There's actually a video about it, uh, this. And port wise we have a tape port because this has, has no built in tape. Oh, I just noticed that the joystick port has split here but it's not not bad it's just a plastic audio out we have a printer port an expansion port we have 5 volts we have 12 volts in for the disk drive and you have to plug this into the monitor which only works with the GT65 and the 
um, color version of that. You have a disk drive connector for the ribbon cable and the, the interface is built in. Power switch and volume knob and on this side you have sweet nothing. So I did change the belt in this a while ago. I'm not sure if it still works, but let's check that out. Yeah, there it is. And this is basic 1.1. I think the 464 had the 1.0 basic. So this machine is very different from the other. First it has a disk drive, then it has 128K and it has built in, almost built in, CPM. For that you need a boot disk and uh, yeah, let me grab the CPM boot disk to show you. So here's a box of, oops, box of disks. You can see these are these. Oh, look at that, CPM disk. Let's just put that in here and then you type pipe CPM and that should load up CPM and there we are. And that was blazingly fast. If you compare that to the 128, Commodore 128 or any other CPM system, this is pretty fast. Um, granted you don't have a hard disk or anything, you just have the disk based stuff here. But it works and it doesn't work too bad, I think. To actually run Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you need CPM. So you can't run this on Amstrad. You have to go and actually boot into CPM, then switch the disk. And it says that in this guide here, startup guide. What you need, an Amstrad CPC 464664 the 664, by the way, is the disk drive version of the 64K model. Or PCW8526 and an Armstrad DDI1 if you have a 464. Yeah. Because then you would also get the CPM disk and you would also get the logo disk. The logo programming language is not necessary, but you need the CPM. And you start CPM and then you go and put in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy disk which I have here, you can check what's on there. And we have hitchhick.com, let's start that. So we say, uh, how do we say that? I think we just type it because it is a com, which means command. And so everything that's a command, he the interpreter of CPM first tries in memory if there's something like dil or directory, it knows that and if it doesn't find that, it looks on the main drive, which is currently selected, which is the A drive. So if I type hitchhike, it should start the game. And it does. And this is real time. You can see how blazingly fast this loads. Yeah, and here we are in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And yes, it has to use the disk all the time. And the keyboard is pretty good to type on. It feels almost like a modern keyboard. how the game works and how Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy works on the Amstrad CPC 6128. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series by Douglas Adams and Infocom Adventures and stuff like that. So not going to go into detail here. Let me show you just some other games like let's say here's Boulder Dash. Just found that. Let's put that in here. And if you want to see what's on this, you type cat for catalog. And then you can just go and type run uh, b dash dot bass. One, two, three, 
four, five, six. Six seconds to load Bolodesh. I think that would be even impossible on a Speed DOS enabled or Dolphin DOS enabled C64. Shift. Now this is up and down. This is right, oh, left and right. Okay. Good. I'm set. And yes, you can of course use a joystick, but I am too lazy to get one right now. So that is a 6128 and as you can see it's a blazingly fast machine and you have Logo, you have Pascal, you have all the programming languages on this and uh, yeah it's, it's just a joy to use this machine or it was a joy back in the day compared to any other machine. So this was a good capable computer and I think it deserved more at least in, in other countries than just... Uh, being a side note and that is why I made this video here. Noel from Noel's Retro Lab is a big CPC guy and he made uh, actually a diagnostic uh, cartridge or ROM for that and um, he's from Spain so in Spain this was big just like in uh, Great Britain. And if you have never seen this in Amstrad or Schneider CPC 6128 now you have, you have no excuse to ignore it anymore. Go and get one if you can in your country. Yeah, so this concludes my little foray into the Armstrong world or Schneider world. If you want to see more, as you can see, I have plenty of discs here. I have even sealed ones, which are pretty valuable. Uh, let me know in the comments and I will do so. By the way, there are also, like for most other computers, modern devices. Let me show you one. This right here is a CPC Dendonator and it only works on the CPC because on the 6128 there's no place to plug it. On the 464 there's the floppy disk interface or the lack of. And that's where you plug this. And it actually can be loaded with games over a USB cable. As you can see I have a USB cable soldered to this directly because uh, I have two of these and both have broken USB ports, so these are really shitty quality. And I never got any games onto this. They have games on them already preloaded, but I never managed to actually use the, the cable and get games on here. So maybe this is a different video. I think I made a video actually and never posted it because I didn't get it to work. And then I had trouble with the seller and he had to send a second one and yeah, it's not great. Also there was a mouse for this and I paid I think 250 marks for a mouse for the CPC and it wasn't even supported and it wasn't even a mouse for the CPC it was for the PCW but I managed to use it in basic and I think that was pretty much all you could do. I, I wrote a, a paint program to use the mouse. Yeah good times. And finally, just to give you an idea of how different a machine the 6128 is to the 464, this is the thickness of the 464 manual and this is the thickness of the 6128 manual. So here's CPM and logo and all the stuff described. This is an even bigger book and you just have to love this. You can really find the characters and all that, use this in game. And it's just great. It's just great. It's a great machine. And as I said, if you ignored it until now, just go and get one. Try it out. There are emulators out there, but they don't do this justice, especially if you like handling disks and stuff. Yeah, and this concludes this video. As always, thank you for watching. And by the way, we recently crossed the 5,000 subscribers mark. Thank you for that. Great. Uh, the channel is healthy and uh, 
some people did ask me why I don't do Patreon and stuff like that. And I have a simple answer to that. That is, I want to have fun with these videos. And if I can't make a video a week, I don't want to stress myself out and have to deliver a video when I know I shouldn't do one or can't do one. And um, yeah, I see that there are people out there who try to live off of YouTube. But if I show you what I make off of YouTube, which is, to put it mildly, a joke. So in a good month, I make $40 for the videos I make. I have more than 260 videos online on YouTube. Granted, they are not the greatest production values, but still it's not a viable business for me. And I could jump on the Patreon bandwagon and all the stuff, but then I would feel committed because I'm, I'm a businessman at heart and I have a, a business in, in Germany or more, more than one business. And my profession is to build businesses. So I know what it takes and I'm happy with my 5,000 subscribers or the channel is because it's not my subscribers, it's a channel subscribers. And I just don't want to ruin the hobby for me and have to, to push out a video every week. And uh, I don't want to get into this, this YouTube burnout stuff. Um, in, the, in the beginning where I did two videos a week, it was just too much over time and I reduced to one video a week I, and sometimes I don't even do that. But I'm happy with the, the way things are now. And yeah, it, it happens as it happens or it doesn't. I don't care too much because I still do these videos and I still work with these machines because I like to work with these machines. It's it's my fun stuff. It's my my little island in the in the sea of madness which is this world. So and if I can take you with me on that island and you you enjoy these videos and seeing these machines, maybe you have never seen a, one of these machines here. Um, or get inspired to build something when I do a new project. Um, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy if you're happy. So again, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sending stuff in. And by the way, if you want to send stuff in, I will feature it on the channel. Um, and please send me a, an email ahead because this room here around me is full. Stack full It's also my office where I do my business from and it's just no more room. So please, if I have to, to sell stuff or give stuff away to actually accept more stuff. And I'm always happy to accept cool stuff and people have done that in the past. So thank you for that also. And the continued support and the nice discussions. And I'm very glad that 99.9% .9 of the people stay positive and friendly in the comments and I make mistakes as most people do even though I wouldn't admit it to my wife but yeah um, I'm, I'm always willing to correct myself so if I make a mistake just let me know and be nice yeah so that now really finally concludes this video of me talking about stuff and CPCs until next time thank you very much from the bottom of my artificial powered heart. It's not artificial, it's just a valve. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.